Hello everybody, it's Matt, Comic Order 410. Got some books in the mail that I submitted for grading at Baltimore Comic Con back at the end of September. These are the books that I submitted to CBCS and Fast Track them. They came back very quickly, so I was pretty happy. They also have four more of my books, and then CGC, who is incredibly behind at the end of con season. I didn't even pay to Fast Track those because I don't think their Fast Track is that fast for 10 bucks extra a book. That's just my opinion, but... The books I submitted to CGC will take four months, and the ones that are getting pressed and graded could take up to eight months, which I think is kind of ridiculous. But uh, I did read that CGC is hiring more graders, more encapsulators, everything, so they need to do that to hurry things up, and they can make more money if they do it. But all the books I submitted were signed, and this particular service that CBCS offers now, the red label verification of books that were previously signed with no witness, I was very excited when they announced it, because as a lot of you know, I get a lot of books signed raw at cons. I can't afford to submit all of them. So I have a lot of books that I would hopefully send in if I was happy with this service. So I picked two books that I knew the signatures were legit because I got them myself and I sent them in. They both came back certified. Very happy with the results. This is the Batman 700 DC 75th anniversary variant. Signed by Mike Mignola, got the red label in a 9.6. And then I submitted, this is the Aspen Civil War number one variant. And it was exclusive to Wizard World Philly in 2006, I believe. It was either 06 or 07. But limited 2,000 copies. Got Michael Turner and Peter Steigerwald to sign it. And I always regretted not getting it slapped because CGC was on site. I don't know why I didn't just get a witness, but, you know, you live and learn. It was also, what, nine years ago. But finally took this and got a Michael Turner signature certified. Came back at 9.8. So very happy with that. I'll probably be submitting more books for red label verification, although it's pretty expensive. So I'll be a little, a little more selective about what I submit. Next up. Got some commission covers that I got graded. Very, very happy with these. This is um, a G.I. Joe 196 blank that I gave to Death of Snake Eyes artist S.L. Gallant. And he did this incredible Baroness commission. I'm so happy with it. Can't believe the work he put in on these. Just, just really, really happy with this. I couldn't have expected uh, the work and the detail, but very happy with it. Came back at a 9.8. Um, you know, for me, it's it's more about, you know, having it certified, especially with a beautiful sketch like that. I don't really care if it's a 9.8 or not. Obviously, it's great It does when it does come back a 9.8, and I'm happy about it. But for me, it's it's having the beautiful sketch. But it's it's pretty pretty incredible that these artists can do something like that and still be careful enough with your book that you get a 9.8 on it. So... Extremely happy with that Baroness sketch. And the way he drew her face, it reminds me of some celebrity. I can't really put my finger on it, but I've been trying to jog my memory. It looks a little familiar. And I dig her hair. It's very 70s Charlie's Angel style. So extremely happy with that one. Got S.L. Gallant to do a second uh, sketch cover for me here. Did this awesome shipwreck with um, Polly crapping and he has his pistol pointed at Polly said saying I said eat the effing cracker so thought that was great that humor he put into it I love this cover you know the detail in the background everything I cannot believe the work he put in for this price and him and his brother are huge G.I. Joe fanboys and I always think it's cool when you see somebody that loves the property who's now working on it they had this hardcover sketchbook with no lie like probably 75 to 100 original commission sketches of all these different G.I. Joe characters by artistic legend after legend. I mean, Herb Trimpey, Larry Hama, you know, um, Brian Stelfree, so many guys. I can't even, I'm not going to begin to go into it, but they let me look through it. And the CBCS witness, they let us look through their personal sketchbook. And it was just so cool to see, wow, these guys are doing the same thing that we're doing. They're fans. So I'll keep buying G.I. Joe while he's on it. Now, I hope to meet him again because he's not, he's local to the area. He lives in D.C. about an hour and a half away. So hopefully I'll get another one. Last up was the thing that made me the happiest 
that I was able to get all weekend at Baltimore Comic Con. This guy is one of my favorite artists. He's a true legend in the business. Many of you know I'm a big fan of this character. And I, in my opinion, this artist, although he didn't create this character, he's the seminal artist on this character, on this book. I couldn't find a blank cover for this character, so I just went with a detective. But I am just so humbled and honored to have an original sketch cover from the great Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. He was super nice. He seemed kind of actually happy that I asked for a Jonah Hex. Uh, like I said, to my knowledge, you don't make a Jonah Hex or an All-Star Western blank, so I just went with a detective because it's what I had. But, man, did he do a beautiful job on this pencil sketch. You can see he did a blue line, rough outline of the sketch, and then just killed it for me. Uh, I'm so happy. This one got a 9.6, which I think is still great. Um, but just very, very happy to finally have a Jonah Hex sketch from my favorite Jonah Hex artist. So, incredible experience. Hell of a nice guy. Um, and, and I hope to meet him again. But, everyone, thank you as always for stopping by. I always appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves and enjoy your comics.